Uh, hi, is it recording? Hi, I'm uh, Tim McCourt and I'm here with Sam Taylor and this is Happy I Out. think it's got to be different from how we introduce it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, alright. So let me, can I have a go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hi, I'm Sam. This is Tim. And uh, this is going to be the last episode in the first series of Happy Out at the Peg Bar and Grill. Uh, it's been super fun, like meeting all these people and getting to talk to some of our kind of animation heroes and it's nice to know that there's people out there listening and enjoying it um and if it's just been an absolute nightmare for everybody else then <laughs> let us know uh and if it hasn't if it's been in any way informative or um enjoyable then also let us know uh and we could potentially do another series yeah i'd like to yeah i think we'd like to do a second series but you know it'd be nice to know that it's wanted <laughs> uh, and also if there's you know particular kind of people out there like animators or filmmakers or you know people involved in animation community that you'd like us to interview just let us know via twitter and uh, you can do that through uh the peg bar twitter is at uh the uh, at peg bar and grill you can also email us through the the peg bar and grill com as well yeah and uh i'm on twitter as well i'm at sam taylor underscore anima um, uh, anyway, uh, our, this week's interview is, uh, is with uh, Mikey Please, um, who we're very happy to be the last person in the series because he's awesome. Thanks very much, on. everyone. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. See you soon. Bye. Bye. All right, my name's Sam Taylor, and I'm here with Tim McCourt, and um, we're talking to Mikey Please, um, who is a director and animator and uh, writer. Um, Sure. And, and stuff. <laughs> Anything else? Illustrator. And stuff. Right? Illustrator. Yeah, I used to dabble in illustration. I haven't actually. I haven't been like paid to just illustrate in like, no. many years. So I don't think I can legitimately put that feather in my cap. But uh, other stuff for sure. I was actually um, uh, really impressed with your writing. I hadn't read much of your writing. Oh, uh, really? I mean, obviously oh, your um, uh, film. Uh, I realise is 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 an amazing feat of writing, but the. Uh, um, but just some of the you know purely written stuff on your website was really really impressive as well. Oh, cool! Uh, where did you come across this uh, skill of writing? Because the you, skill of writing. Yeah, because you did it at fine art course, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, uh, before yeah. this, you've n- you never really done sort of writing in any kind of educational no. way. I mean, um, yeah, I mean my my dad's a writer. Oh, my really? Dad's, oh, right. um, yeah. It's kind of what's uh, his name? Peter, please, Peter. He uh, yeah, he's written like kind of some children's novels and like does a lot of travel writing and stuff. I don't know if that's where I get it from. Actually, like before, <laughs> this is like very embarrassing, but if I'm brutally honest, like where the yes. sort of, like the love of like words and like wordsmithing came from, is I wanted to be a rapper. I really wanted to like be really? a rapper. Like, Did really? You? Not really, but like, you know, like I went through that bit. stage of like, when you were sort of in your early teens, you're like, that is the thing. That is the thing that I'm going to oh, be. Oh, man, and it's gonna can be you great. do a little freestyle? N- no <laughs> way. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe. So how far did you get, get, did you get Corona? Down, like, nowhere, like, obviously nowhere. But I, you I, never I, did a little battle, just. I actually did, yeah. I used to do, I used to do like, really? I used to do a little battle. Wow. Like, oh. Where was it? Was it in the hood? Or was <laughs> no, it? No. On radio, this isn't, good, this isn't a good, like, I'm a, I'm a legit animator. <laughs> Talking about MC. No, it's an awful, awful little period of my life. I, I can tell that you're MCing rather than MCing. <laughs> but um, is there like a sort of MC Mikey Please, like MySpace? There, there is no evidence online oh. that it really hurt. Like, not even no, you with like a backpack Google. attached. Like, yeah, no, no evidence. Yeah, no, 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 no
you know, lots and lots of finessing, and I think that kind of came from that. Uh, mm. So was that the kind little of little period of my life, which uh, you know, was that the kind of music you were into when you were younger? Then? Yeah, like when, I was, when I was younger, yeah. Okay. I kind of didn't realise there were other sorts. Right, sorts right, of music oh, right. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. You, you know, you grew up in Bath. Yeah, Badass. It's pretty Bath. Yeah. You know. yeah. But um, was it, it was Eagleman Stag written as a short story first? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I wrote that while I was on, while I was on the, the fine art course. So, right. um, I was just kind of like, in, I mean, I've, I've always been uh, quite interested in like science and like, yeah. So um, it was just written as like a factual thing. It was like, just like I wonder if that's why time feels quicker. Right. Or do you get? I wonder if it's because of that and just like figuring it out and then and then it like became a short story and then. So when you wrote the short story, it wasn't an intention to be a film. No, no, not really. Actually, I, yeah, it, it was a few things before it was a film. Like I did a little, um, like audio. Play really? <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. Wow, it was meant to be like a suicide note, like so. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote it as a, yeah, I wrote it as not, not mine. Oh, right, the Jesus. story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote the suicide note, and I got through it and made a film. Oh, what's so the no, radio <laughs> played with someone? Yeah, yeah. So, so it was like the short story was uh, like his like parting memoir or whatever, which was like him talking about why why he has chosen to do this and you kind of read it as if it's a suicide note and then and I was like it doesn't quite work as a written piece and tried it as a, an audio piece and I don't know mm. and then I was like actually someone else read it and was like that should, that should be your film I was like no it's too depressing or whatever like <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah and then obviously yeah. It's, it's, it, that's what it became in the end but well, yeah, then just after later and you were like that was a good exactly. idea okay <laughs> that, one, that one worked okay. <laughs> um, yeah, just to impose a little bit of structure on this, the uh, um, so the Eagleman Stag is a film that you made uh, when you graduated from the Royal College of Art. Is that was mm-hmm. that the last thing that you made when you were there? Yeah, yeah, that was the thesis film. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that um, and that uh, won the BAFTA that year, um, which was the same year where you were nominated with Dave Prosser and Matthias Hoke. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so after that, then you. Uh, you set up as a freelance director, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I left my undergraduate, I went straight to Picasso Pictures, and okay. they kind of took me on as like a young, uh, I think they were called Young Blood or something. You know, it's like lots of production companies have this like strange beast or whatever, where they mm-hmm. kind of yeah, bring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this straight off the like, RCA? Yeah. No, this is straight after my undergraduate. Oh, okay, sorry. So yeah. this was a, oh, a right, few years okay. before sure. okay. before that. So I'd actually I'd been sort of working as right. like, and I d- I did a few like freelance directing projects. Okay. After that, and and then and then I was like, I really because I'd never learned animation, and right. so I was just sort of like doing it in the production office, being like, yeah, it's just about work. But um, it's like yeah, no, I should, where was your undergraduate? Uh, Wimbledon. Right. Okay. okay. And that was why not. It was. It was actually. It was half fine art, and then I swapped over to a technical course. So I did like tech art. So I did fine art sculpture for a bit. I was like, I, sh- I should learn. Something. Was the the technical course the um, the uh, the tech arts and special effects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great course. Isn't it's a it? really great course. Didn't Amazing we like Chris Cunningham? Yeah, Chris um, Cunningham. Went yeah, there. yeah, Famous Chris Cunningham didn't and um, Corin Hardy and yeah, much other some good names. Chris Cunningham. Yeah. Yeah. Do you learn a lot of like technical things there? Yeah, I mean, it's it's mainly like uh, I think a lot of people from there go off into places like Madame Tussauds or mm, into really? like special effects. Yeah, because wow. it's like sort of like body sculpting and there's li- you know bits of sort of animatronics and prosthetics mm. and um, stuff like that. Lots of like puppet fabrication and things like that. But um, so the but graduation I, I, show was like Madame Tussauds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of people kind of go from there, and that, wow. like I think. Uh, so actually, so when I when I left, like just before, um, just before I went to the RCA, actually maybe it was even while I was at the RCA as well. I was I was working as like a puppet maker at um, like the Lion King, which is where loads really? of people went as well. So so there's all this like yeah, that's kind of where everyone ends up going. Yeah, <laughs> my friend <laughs> did that, that course, and he 
did I think a week at Madame Tussauds afterwards and was like ah, I'm not into this but he said it was like yeah I think it's quite used. hardcore like yeah just sculpting yeah. celebrities' heads and stuff. Yeah, it's not my not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> so did yeah. you, so so I guess that you were doing fine art, and there was something about that that made you switch onto something that was more technical. Or more yeah, I think I think it was like entertainment. Like I, because on my, when I was on fine art, I was doing like storybooks. I was making storybooks, and I did, I did I yeah, yeah. I was kind of doing things which I thought were like great fine art projects, but within the context of like this, you know, this doesn't fit in the canon of mm. what we were meant to be doing, so I was like, well, yeah, I'm not going to change it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'd rather go somewhere else, so yeah, so that's kind of, and, and maybe, I don't think tech arts was like the right place for me either, I probably should right. have just gone and, I had friends who were studying in Kingston animation, and I was actually living in Kingston, so right. what I'd do is i like go to their lectures, right. and, Would you? yeah, I'd kind of, and so I made friends with the Kingston tutors, and was like, got, you know, like, found out like tips from them and stuff, wow. and, that's cool um, that you went sort of beyond the confines of the school though to push it a bit further. Yeah, I probably should have gone. For, I probably should have just like had the balls and yeah. left totally and gone to start somewhere else. <coughs> but, but I, I think there's very few people who get it right with their undergraduate course. I mean, like you're coming straight out of school, mm. and you have absolutely no idea of like yeah. what, what's what, and like it's really hard. Even, like you know, a lot of people don't even know like animation's a job, let alone no, like, that's the thing. What the best university is to go and study. Yeah, yeah. In. I had no idea until I got to uni, really, I was like, shit, people actually do this as a job? Like, mm. what? There are courses? Like, yeah, a lot of people and, say that. Yeah, yeah, so, I, yeah. I wouldn't so have said it was a bad thing you doing that Wimbledon course, because you, you saying you did that now makes perfect sense, now looking at your work, and it's so kind of uh, cool. crafted and... Yeah, maybe. I think definitely the, the tech arts, like, you know, not, not kind of studying animation completely might have helped like in early you know in an earlier stage just to sort of find my mm. own unique thing or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but then but then it's equally crippling and just like actually don't didn't know how to actually do anything mm. and had to kind of take a few steps back <laughs> afterwards to actually learn stuff but. so how much are you interested in the actual craft of what you do like the tools and the process like how much of that is um I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you find, but like there, there are moments where, you know, you, you have an idea about how to do something, and actually, when you're, kind of putting it together, it does something. It does something more. You know, it kind mm. of. Uh, I don't know if you guys get that as much with like, two D animation, where like, like happy accidents happen, and, but yeah. But a lot of I'd time, say most of the time it probably ends up not being as good as <laughs> you wanted it to be. Yeah. A sad accident. A sad yeah, accident. Like <laughs> um, occasionally, yeah, I guess so. I, um, I think that is, I, I think happy accidents are something that you have to be really open to for mm. them to happen. And then another thing is like if you're working for, I mean, a lot of the work that we do is professional. So if you're working for a client, if you pitched in something, yeah, if, right. you, if you change halfway through, you've got to suddenly justify that in a meeting full of a bunch of people. And that's yeah, really sure. Difficult thing. But like the, the the project you were just showing me, that looked right. kind of as as though I, I'd imagine there was a, a degree of room to like mm. let yeah. the process kind of you know bring up new things that maybe you haven't expected. And, yeah, I guess is that, is that fair? Yeah, I'm hope, fair. I mean, I mean, <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully that is uh, to keep you interested in it. Is that it has to have some element of like playing or creativity, mm. or you know, it can't just be like executing a thing that you've planned ages ago. Otherwise, yeah. it's gonna be super boring. I mean, in, in in terms of like getting obsessed with process, though, I think uh, I remember taking like an ex girlfriend to see an animated film, and I was just like bloody the process of that like did you see like, how they did that yeah. and that and then and she's like like, like no one gives a shit mm. apart from you like no one gives a shit we, we broke up like very soon after <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but she had a quite a valid point which is you know yeah, totally really man. what people care about is yeah. story and like performance and content mm -hmm. and as long as it's like legible that's probably what most people are going to take away with it and and the flare on top you know that kind of alchemic transformative thing that you get yeah. when you do really wicked animation <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is I don't know I mean I, 
I think there's like a, a portion at the top of that, but you know, you see kind of really poorly rendered like flash mm. videos be amazingly entertaining, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. True. and do incredibly well. And mm. so it's, I love getting like deep, deep into process and like playing with stuff and, you know, feeling like a wizard. Mm. <laughs> but actually like, uh, the, uh, did like remember to rein it back and I concentrate think, on the important stuff, which is the content and story and performance and stuff. I think it's a fine line to walk because the, like, the cumulative effect of um, having been a nerd about process for quite a long time, I think um, shows up, it, there's a sort of mark of quality that you get from, from that um, thing. And nobody else has to go through all the sort of um, pain and trawling through kind of books and, and, and studying and um, getting really nerdy about it. But I, I think that they, a lot of people appreciate the fact that you have that level of craftsmanship and you sure. have personally taken that upon themselves, you don't necessarily need to show that to them, but that is, you know, that's something I think that Yeah, is, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, yeah, when I look at your stuff, it's only kind of, it's so crafted, but then your stories are so kind of like engaging, particularly even in Stag. It's only kind of after watching it a few times, you start noticing like the, the, the level of craft. Like I've... Not, like I've seen it a couple of times, but I watched it again today, oh, cool. and there was things I was like I hadn't noticed the first time around. Like when they draw and you sort of expose like a bit of like foam or something, like that's drawing oh, on okay. top. I love that bit as well. And yeah. it's I the first time around I never really noticed that, and I'm so surprised that I didn't, you know. And um, and uh, how it's kind of it sort of becomes a bit more clear now that when whenever there's close-ups, it's, you're not just zooming into the hands. You're they seem like they've been remodeled or yeah uh, sort um, of tried to like build things bigger because and I just and and the, I, I mean I'm I'm gonna ask you <laughs> quiz you a bit more about like your process later but um, yes, please do uh, yeah there seems to be so much effort put into things where people just wouldn't think oh I've got to make a whole new set of hands I can't be bothered like that that's yeah. really my <laughs> what I would do yeah there seems to be that kind of level of craft then it's sort of secondary you know like it doesn't feel like the piece is about that. Mm. I mean, yeah, like with with that film in particular, mm. um, I think I was trying to like not do all of the things which are sort of hated about stop motion, which is which you don't get with other things. You don't get it with hand drawn. You don't get mm. it with CG, and that's you know, one of the things like you know limiting your cinematic range to a set so yeah. usually things are always shot with models you know well, not always but definitely on a particular scale definitely student films which although I like this is you know it was a student film mm. it was like it's yeah it's not going to fall into those little traps and um, yeah just building things bigger trying to storyboard it and animatic it without thinking at all about like how uh, you can actually do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about like how it's going to be done. Just thinking like that's the best way to do it. And but I think you're doing stuff that I d haven't seen in any stop motion. Like you wouldn't like if they're you know maybe I'm wrong, uh, but in you know when they're doing stop motion Arden, I'm pretty sure they don't make bigger versions of Wallace and Gromit when there's close ups. I bet the camera just goes in closer. You know. I actually I don't know. I have no idea. I'm sure they do. No. Really? Oh, I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm positive they do kind because of see, they, they, they do everything. So I've seen stuff where, like, when it goes in, you you start seeing noticing the thumbprints more, or like, yeah, uh, I, yeah I don't know. Maybe that was something about. interesting about you. Um, so um, uh, you gave a talk recently at Pictoplasma in Berlin, mm. um, which was I was also at, but I was um, you were. I was intending to go to. You were hungover, and then I slept through, and I also you slept, slept. Sadly <laughs> slept through your your most recent film, Marilyn. <laughs> what, what in the cinema? No, no, no. no. <laughs> like I slept like externally from the cinema through that. Um, just oh, okay. <laughs> That's even worse because then you could have watched it back. No. No, I mean I was like at home in bed, watched and it. I didn't make it to the cinema because it was Berlin. Oh, right, 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 And I'd been out late the night before. Um, have you seen it? Have I, I still it? haven't seen it. No, no, I haven't seen it. No, no, I haven't seen I haven't it. Seen it I'm so sorry. Um, but uh, have you seen it? As no, you no, haven't no, no, seen right. it, I can say. I was going to. It does look amazing. Right. <laughs> like, uh, the trailer looks incredible. Um, but yeah, you. So you. you it's, gave coming on, it's coming online next week. 
Really? Awesome. Hopefully. Cool. Okay. Uh, what's yeah. the name of it again? Marilyn Miller. Marion Miller. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and that is the uh, that's the next short film that you've done after Eagle Mustache. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of of that. Was How it long is it? Six minutes. Short time. Cool. Yeah. Did, is it right? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, is it right that you started that when you was on a placement in Tokyo? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I did right. um, uh, the Japic residency, which right. is like their kind of Ministry of Cultural Affairs. So it's like a big kind of ambassadorial mm. uh, cross Atlantic or whatever, you know. <laughs> so it's, it, it was it was great. It was cool. It was quite a weird experience mm. too. Um, I think the expectation of it was that you were to make a three minute film while on this residency and like it's three months long. Like that's just about enough time to like write, <laughs> to write and plan and, did you, and board. Did you tell them that before you accepted it? No, no. I think I lied. <laughs> so right. so I, could, I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. I can make it. It's fine. I'll do it. Yeah, it's fine. You've got and like uh, a massive set and loads of tools and yeah. stuff and lights <laughs> and things. I did actually like, I ended up making another film there. Oh, really? Which I didn't mean to, which I just, it was like, because straight after that I was going to a, this thing called Cartoon Movie and France, which is like a big, weird financing forum, um, and they and I was basically pitching this feature idea. Oh, really? Which I've been working on for a couple of years, but um, but um, but they basically emailed like two weeks before, being like, "We are really looking forward to seeing your trailer for the movie." I was like, "Was that Japanese or French?" That was French. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously French, <laughs> right, right? But anyway, so in, so in this in this hotel room in Tokyo, I ended up making this like one minute stop motion trailer of for the for the conference. And wow! It was in the hotel room. Yeah, it was the most horrible, like weird. I literally didn't leave this hotel room for two weeks. Ended up. This is for a cartoon movie. This is this is for the, yeah, it's for a cartoon movie conference. Anyway, yeah. Had it had it. What was it like? It's really bad. Yeah. Is it, up, is it up on your? No, 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 okay. no. I don't oh, think it ever will be. It's it's alright. Considering it was made in like a tower block in Tokyo, right. uh, <laughs> like that's, in that's in, in that's my pajamas. Cool, <laughs> but it's 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 a it's a three month um, program organised by the government or something to fund it. Yeah, it's it's, it's funded by the government, but it's actually run by like a really cool like group of enthusiasts who are just like massive animation kind of nerds right um it's really great it's great and, and they kind of got really good connections with like all of the you know amazing animation community it's like completely funded so right you kind of yeah you get uh stipend or whatever it's called mm -hmm. while you're there and yeah it's it's yeah it's so really good. So you get off the <laughs> plane and there's somebody waiting for you and they take you to a hotel and like all that. I mean, is it yeah, yeah, cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there were three of us who like stayed in. Oh, right, okay. Like three at the same three, time. Three separate floors in this hotel. Yeah. For three months. Um, for three months. Amazing. Yeah. Pretty and they, they have a cool. studio prepared for you and stuff? Or? No, you're, but the, the apartment's like definitely by Tokyo standards, right. pretty big. They put um, you on an island and you're all dressed as school yeah, kids and exactly and they give you one night. Kill it, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and you were working the whole the whole time with them together in the same no, place. No, just no all? separately. I mean we we all had our we all have like three flats, but we okay. just hang out in the evening. And you worked in your sort of place of residence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's kind of quite yeah. intense. And was it heavily supervised? Did you have to Yeah, it is heavily I mean that would be my only critique of it which like for the for the amount of stuff you're kind of expected to do at the end there's actually not that much free time most of it's great because you're going out to going to like Studio Ghibli and going to wow. like, Production IG and like Fuck. going out to all these like really cool places and meeting like entry animators and stuff and just then, so, so what, they take you out and introduce you to the people kind of like yeah, just day trip yeah, or something yeah exactly and um, but then uh, yeah, there's just no time to like do anything. Right. So, and 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 because it's a government-funded thing, there's like loads and loads of like bureaucratic right okay. government stuff. So we got like paraded quite a lot. Right, right. And you saw what you had to present your work, what you were. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah, lots of like flipboard sure. presentations and. Well, I mean, one of the cool things they they take you on a like a 
like a lecture tour of Japan. So we did like five different talking events at like all places up and down Japan. Wow. Which was amazing. Yeah, it's totally cool. So we go to like Kyoto and Nara and and, and you've got a bit of time to sort of it. go out and meet cool. people and get the get the get the sort of the lie land. Yeah, a little bit. I, like I said, I kind of shot myself in the foot towards the end of it. Right, sure. Doing stupid. Right. Stupid projects. But, uh, yeah, yeah. normal people wouldn't do that. But, it, but, but the thing that you um, worked on there is what is the thing that's going to be released. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. Great. But just, yeah, so I, I wrote and storyboarded it there and then made it a few months later. Cool. In Clapham Road. And that, it was... Uh, had funding by is it Warp and is that no right? no that's that's yeah um, no the the short film was funded by uh, Blinking and oh, okay. okay and myself and another investor okay so it was like a a bunch of people oh. was it expensive film uh, yeah it's expensive yeah. Yeah, yeah, it costs a lot. It costs a lot of money to make. You'd have to say. Yeah. S- I mean, stop motion must it, be a, a, a red It's a hard thing to like, put a proper number on, but. So, what? So, so you, don't, well, you don't have to do a budget at the. You don't have what, to do oh, a budget what, as, as part of the residency. No, I mean, like, when you, you know, when you start a film like this and you're getting investors involved. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You present a budget. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's like there's loads of that, you know, like sure. definite hard costs, you know, right. forgetting time, mm. forgetting like. Animators' time. Mm. There's just like studio hire and mm. lights and equipment and model makers and props people. Yeah, mm. yeah. There's loads of like really stupid costs. And you and you <laughs> paid everybody who worked on it then. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, yeah there great. was no. Actually, I mean, uh, we yeah no we had we had like a couple of interns who just did short stints, and we had one girl Jen Newman who came. Or she came to work for a couple of weeks and then just stayed and eventually we kind of were able to kind of hire her semi properly. But yeah, I mean it's still like short film short film kind of by the skin Rates. of its teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. yeah. And it is stop motion an expensive thing to produce. In, in general, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I assume it would be. Like, in, I, and I think that that's one thing that stopped me from playing around with stop motion things mm. is because um, I, I did a job recently where I had to actually use brushes and paints, and I realised for the first time in years like how much it actually costs to go out and buy brushes. I think and, I think it can be, and I think if you go like I don't know if you do kind of everything the textbook you like the way you're meant to do it then you know like there, there are certain things I just re- refuse to ever do just because they're too expensive and they take too much time and they're stupid like exactly. like silicone casting and I mean it's not they they can be good but it's like the I don't know yeah there's the I find them more hindering than like, mm. liberating or whatever so yeah it, it is like it, uh, very like polluted process but actually there are ways to do it like there are ways to do anything which are just as good but not mm. like the, the kosher <laughs> official way <laughs> to do things so that's kind of like using upholstery foam like using upholstery foam yeah is that what it is pretty much yeah it's like it's like um it's like roll mat it's like yoga mat foam right okay to give away all my brilliant secret. But yeah, yeah. It's funny because <laughs> yeah, it looks like, quite solid, but then it, I suppose that's, the, and then it bends and it doesn't look solid. It doesn't look <laughs> solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, it's like fake flesh. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. It's good. Do you do much like um, replacement, like for like hands or any or facial yeah, expressions or yeah, stuff? Yeah, a little bit. We just started doing some more, like did some, done a bit more like 3D replacement printing stuff you know so oh, really? it's all on like commercial projects where we have a proper budget to do so mm. then that's like amazing you was that the potatoes one <laughs> yeah that that's really good man that's all oh, like you today. liked it yeah we liked you it you saw it today yeah yeah and did it, you see that um, it was on Vimeo was it everything's on Vimeo man. not on my Vimeo and I'll find it oh yeah, cool <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it was really nice I really oh, liked nice. that yeah yeah and nice. yeah because I was thinking like it, the the potato sort of 
constantly sort of boils and there's, yeah, there's no yeah. sort of seams where you've replaced the mouth or something. Is it just every potato is a completely... Yeah, yeah, each one's a different... Wow. So what's this thing? Different what's this advert? Oh, right, sorry. It's yeah. uh, an advert so, on you introducing. Yeah, so it's it's um it's like a TV advert that me and Dan Jari directed for Green Mail Potatoes. Okay. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's nicely <laughs> written as well, I think, actually. Yeah. It's like not it's a little bit like stoner humour. Like we didn't write yeah. it, obviously it's it's an agency wrote it. Mm. But, um but yeah, we were surprised, like really? That's that's the Yeah, because there's a bit where it goes, oh like I'm half baked or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was pretty whoa. like for you know, for what you can end up directing and advertising, it was nice. Yeah, it? it's true. Yeah, for yeah, absolutely. Mm. For like and and so was that done uh, with Blink? Because you're represented yeah. by Blink now, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. so that, that was a project through them. Um, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a nice thing about that kind of scale of thing that uh, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to play around with 3D printing and work with a bunch of CG guys and yeah, try out those things without it. So it it, it kind of although uh, have to like I don't know. Swallow your not like swallow your pride, but like uh, accept that it's a commercial thing and accept that it has to like fulfill, which is totally fair enough. Like, and know, people are, yeah, but yeah, you know, people are paying however much money to make this thing happen, so that's yeah, just part of it, which is fun. <laughs> and and getting to like play around with other materials and technical stuff, so. Uh, Kind of makes it worth it. So, cool. so you were, uh, you were you were doing commercials before you started the RCA. That's what you said. Yeah, I mean, just, not just a we didn't we didn't do proper commercials. I mean, I did right, okay. I did a typical sequence for uh, a reality TV show right. and uh, a bunch of like little viral things. And how did you um, how did you get represented straight out of art school college? Um, actually, it was through. So through the tutor I made with it, friends with at Kingston, Damien Gascoigne, um, I think I went to, I like, I even like wasn't invited. I think I went to like some screening that I knew he was having like with some other people in Soho. And it was kind of, I was quite young, I was like 21 or something. And um, I just sort of blagged my way in and then I had show reels. I put them in people's bags. Did you? Yeah. Well, without asking them. Such a dick. <laughs> yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's just like a little. Did anybody little see you? No, I mean, I was, I was, I was with my girlfriend at the time, and she was like, "Yeah, just fucking do it. Come on, just fucking do it. Put it wow. in." Because um, and it was uh, Stuart Hilton, who's actually a sure. teacher's now, and uh, and I was a big fan of Stu's work, and and my girlfriend had been flirting with him all night, and she was like, "Yeah, it's fine. Just put it in his bag. Put it in his bag." I was like, "Okay, fuck it, do it." And then so um, she distracted him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She tried him. And then, and then, like a few weeks later, they kind of were like, we're not sure how we've got this. Real. Wow, amazing. And that's how you ended up getting little director's gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, they, they 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 brought me in, and I mean, it was partly, you know, I was sort of part of this like young blood thing, and also making DVDs, doing mm. like shoddy comping on people's pictures, stuff mm. like that. So. So you were yeah. like half runner, half... Director. Yeah, like production monkey. Okay. Mm. But also yeah. being groomed. That's great. Um, but it was, it was amazing, yeah. And I'm, I think at the time I was just like a little bit kind of grumpy about like doing right. the crap stuff, you know. But actually, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing thing to do straight out of. Sure. I mean, how did you guys... What, what's your... Uh, is, this, is this not the time? This is the switcheroo. <laughs> the switcheroo. I'm just uh, curious. Like, uh, like, yeah, I mean, I, um, uh, I I went to university and did a did a degree, and then I uh, got a job straight out of university working on The Illusionist, that film. Ah, oh, amazing! Yeah. Sylvain Chamay did. Yeah. Um, pretty soon after, and then I worked there for three years, and that was kind of uh, as a cleanup artist. And yeah, that was cool. an interesting experience. Um, that went on for quite a long time yeah. um, but definitely like you know was like an amazing education you know which totally set me up for everything I did after that yeah it was that was that was quite unusual but uh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I did um, a digital media course. Um, that was two years, and then it was all right. I was mainly learning like three D stuff, and then there was a lot of learning kind of other different things like uh, website building and typography, and I didn't really like that. And I just sort of got sort of not into wanting to learn softwares. But they did like they encouraged life drawing and I got really into drawing again. And then the second year I basically didn't do any three D and just focus on drawing and decided that's what I wanted to do. And then there was an option to do a third year where you got the full degree because mm -hmm. there was a digital media course but it was a foundational degree and then so you could kind of leave after two years and still get a qualification. Okay. And I thought, I don't want to go and do a third year because I'm just going to get like basically like a bad film and have to write a dissertation because I don't really know how right. to animate it. <laughs> so then I did a St. Martin's course, mm -hmm. which is just 2D animation. Oh, the, the character. Yeah. Was, yeah, oh, amazing. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was good fun. Um, how long was that? It was a year? Nine. Yeah, it was like nine months, like one school year. And then I sort of learned basics of animation and left and then I realised, oh, I need to know how to use programs <laughs> to work in the industry. Yeah. So then I just sort of just practised at home and, and then I actually didn't work in animation for about a year or so. I just worked oh, yeah. in shops while I sort of practised and then left work altogether to make a short film with Wes, Wesley Louie. Cool. Cool. He was part of the line as well. And yeah. Um, yeah, we made a short film and then did all right, got some kind of work in a few places and then yeah, that was it. I guess I've met what, I met Sam. The rest of history. The rest is history. Got kids, guys. Now, kids on the way. Yeah, you do. Cuties. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's not that interesting actually. <laughs> oh well, no, I think it is. I think it's like it's you know if you don't know like how that kind of gestation happened, it's easy to think like things arrived fully formed and um, yeah, you know, especially like looking at your guys' work, which is. So amazing! I think a lot of people just be like, you know, that's just that's just what they're like. like I, I, you know, think, I think from, you, yeah, from I think day one. I think like, you're completely right. And yeah. I think that that's like part of the reason why I wanted to, you know I've wanted to do this series of podcasts mm. um, uh, is is because there is a lot of like there's a hell of a lot of shit between like the point at which you decide to do that thing Absolutely, and the point yeah. at which you get any kind of like you know. Um, you, you do anything that you're remotely happy with, mm. I think. Um, well, so only, uh, it's like true of pretty much everywhere in life, like, you know, we only ever see the tip of the iceberg. Right. Like, that good true. book that we read is, like, the top tip of a, <laughs> an iceberg of shit beneath it, which, right. mm. and you're just like, oh, I'd never write that thing, or, mm. you know, I'd never be able to make that film, but, yeah, mm. I think it sort of puts people off, but, yeah, just remember, it's all there. Yeah. All the like failed attempts beneath it. <laughs> sure. It is so true. Yeah. You're thinking and failing and yeah, uh, totally. yeah. Um so have you ever thought about writing? Have you ever thought about like just doing a novel just, of just the writing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah, I've yeah. Got a couple of couple of little things which yeah, have really. been sort of chipping away at for for ages. But um Do you read a lot? I I do read a lot, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I like yeah, I like to. I mean um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I read a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, mean, I, I, find... I, I, I think that um, a lot, um, in my experience, like a lot of animators don't read that much. And I'd say that that would okay. be my kind of like biggest problem with like animation generally is it doesn't kind of look to other forms of art, which are like mm. very rich, like literature, for example. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think, I think there's, there's a lot of like stigma as well with using language too much in animation and I've, I've never understood that just like it's this amazing tool you have to like tell more story so especially in like Europe or whatever you know like Annecy where they're like if you use spoken word in your film it is cheating <laughs> it's like you, well, you mean you're talking about voiceover pure, right yeah, uh, voiceover or dialogue or right. whatever just just like um, uh, maybe yeah it is true that, you know the purest form of cinema is silent but it's like some it's like a 
I don't know, like songs without lyrics, you know, it's, mm. they're not bad or worse, it's just a different, it's like another way mm. to communicate something. Why not use that? Why not use that yeah. tool? I think, yeah, that is true. You do tend to see that a lot from kind of student films that they're, I don't know if this is because it's like another headache having to try and like record. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, but at least just recording it. I mean, like you can tell from this podcast, it's not like really, it's a lot of energy to actually record something decently. <laughs> so, like, imagine as a student and you're already struggling to fucking knock out a decent looking film, and then you have to worry about the sound and yeah. But it's so it's so important. I think this is that was, uh, you know, from coming like through the undergraduate and just like watching like tons and tons of films around the levels just like the, the, the films that stand out are the ones where the I think those audio performances or the I don't know I guess like the, the, the sound is like so much like core of something mm. so what is your day to day sort of like thing what do you do is it every day completely different are you with sp- day to day I mean are you spending how much time are you spending doing advertising how much time are you spending working at your shorts and um, it, it really like come, you know I'm sure it's the same with you guys that like, comes in kind of blocks I, I'm really bad at like multitasking I can't I can't like think about 10 projects at once I find I get it, t- it will take me like a couple of days to like really like sink into like thinking about something Properly, so, um, but yeah, and you, yeah. I mean, the the years like very varied, like it all, to everything you know, from potato stuff to like <laughs> um, high highbrow literature. <laughs> so, <deep. laughs> so uh, not literature, you know, but like, yeah, sure. the, the, the the days are very varied. Like it's, um, but so it tends to be like one project at a time try not to but you don't work in a house at Blink do you? no 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 so we, we have a studio so I share a studio with Dan Ojari who's another stop motion animator from the RCA and we've been working together since he went to Wimbledon as well so we worked on like making films together there together and at the RCA together and so it's just a natural thing and um, uh, so yeah so I work out a studio in Oxford which and do you uh, do you have like a Business hours? Do you business or hours. observe? We like try, nine we to, try five to. I mean, yeah. Do you guys give each other a hard time if you don't turn up on, on time? In the well, morning? Dan's really good. Dan's got like a proper good, like, I think, balanced life approach. And I know the last couple of weeks have been different because my, my girlfriend's been away, so I was like, now's the time I'm just going to go like crazy at stuff. But usually, yeah, try and keep it. Life balance, but yeah. And so, you what know, have you been lately. working on the last couple of weeks then? Um, well, I, I just sort of handed in the last draft of this feature script, which have been taking kind of yeah, put me away actually for a couple of years, which is wow. really satisfying to like, I don't know, get it out of my, off my chest or whatever. So, I'm just waiting for, waiting for feedback from it. And this, and this is <laughs> which is kind of terrifying, but yeah. Um, is it an animated feature? Yeah, it's animated. Wow. Animated feature. God. Um, yeah, it's it's really exciting, but it's also uh, I don't know, kind of terrifying, terrifying prospects. But um, who's handling the? Uh, is it with a particular production company or a distributor? Uh, so the, the the development's being funded by Film4 and wow. it's through Warp Films. Oh great, oh so this is right, yeah, yeah so that's, that's on the site, right, right. Yeah, so Warp, uh, uh, it's been produced by Mary Burke who did like Submarine and wow. um, Bunny and the Bull and oh, of cool. Yeah, I liked Bunny and cool the Bull. Cool films, yeah, yeah. It's great, right? Yeah. yeah. And Midnight Beast and mm. the series that. But, um, but yeah, but it's so, yeah just kind of handed that in last week. Fantastic. And I meet up with her. So you handed Monday. it into Mary Burke. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then yeah, she yeah. reads it and she comes back to you and yeah, talks yeah. about it. But so this this is like uh, I handed another version like end of last year. And we had a kind of like 
you know, dissecting of it and seeing So she looks over it, does anybody else look over it? Yeah, I mean, it goes to film four and it's, right, okay. I work with a script editor as well, who, uh, a lady called Kate Lees, who's, um, yeah, just a sort of story editor. So we kind of sit through it together, talk about what doesn't work and mm-hmm. everyone's motivations are doing at the right places. And Fantastic. Yeah, How do you find that process? Full on. Really full on. Yeah, it's difficult. It's really difficult. I haven't, I haven't worked. Which, like, which, which part is difficult? The, the writing or the meetings? Or the, the, the like quantifying your whims, you know, I don't know how you guys work, but like so often every, you know, most things I do will be like, gut feelings or you know but like yeah that's good I don't know why but it's good and yeah. like and when you're in that sort of dissection kind of justifying everything it's it's really hard and, and it's a, it's a learned skill I think yeah. being able to like properly quantify exactly what you're thinking and I'm used to doing it in quite a technical way talking about animation but talking about really ethereal things like you know, emotional arcs and mm. and like deep core truths and stuff mm. like that is, is fucking difficult. Yeah, the most okay. difficult thing I've ever done by a long way was this draft. Try to so fucking long. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and is it so really is it a skill that you enjoy like developing? You think it's an important yeah. thing, or do you? Yeah, I mean, I mean to be honest, like mo- most of my definitely over the last like couple of years, most of my income has come through like writing and working on like the development side right. of stuff. Okay. Rather than advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've, I mean, apart from the potato thing, I haven't mm. done any, so. Um, so do you, have yeah, you been paid to develop the, the uh, script? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's wicked. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so that's kind of been like my job for, you know, about a year. And that's over that. now. But it's kind of like spread out. Yeah, yeah, but that's over now. And I'm, <laughs> I'm so happy about it. Right, right, right. Like just because it's, it's... And so there's intense. no more drafts, that's it. There's no more drafts, but I mean, the, there's no more drafts that I would just do like on my own. Right. I'm hoping... I mean, who knows? Yeah, I'm not sure what the next stage is. It will be... It will either like we go straight into boarding and do the next draft as boards, or it goes through another draft. And on how you shit it was. Is it is it planned to be a stop motion animation? I take it. It um it'll be a high a high production. Oh really? Of yeah. what? Of I mean, you know, it over the gestation of it has changed like the technical way we're thinking about it, but because of a load of the um stuff that we're animating it yeah I'm, I'm what i'd love to do is a, is a hybrid of 2d and stop motion oh really so i do like wow um yeah model sets and environments and 2d animation what? i feel like that's the oh, so the characters wouldn't be stop vision. motion no fucking hell that's Fuck wicked. No, no. that's amazing that's really exciting oh it's so exciting yeah um like it'd be if it you know it, if it all comes through and there's I mean, who knows what chance of it actually coming through? But yeah, be, be super exciting. And and what sort of what sort of audience do you think is going to watch this kind of thing? Because this is something that we talked about. We uh, interviewed Shinola uh, recently, and they were talking about the the whole idea that there is a very limited audience for um, animation, which is not um, you know CG kind of mm. stuff for kids. Um, like, do you have an idea of, of the kind of people that you see? Go and see this thing, or is this you just make it yourself? It's, and it's an intelligent about family that. audience, is what I'm right. kind okay. of thinking. Okay. It's, it's not, um, you know, it's not the nut job, but at the same time, it's not Walter Bashir. It's, mm. it's, uh, yeah, it's there's there's going to be nothing. I mean, <laughs> nothing in it which, like, uh, a seven year old couldn't okay. follow. I think, right. but at the same time, hoping there's a lot more there too mm-hmm. so is it yeah, something it's, it's a difficult thing to like place and I've found that pretty was difficult. that something that came at the beginning or something that came later on I mean when you pitched it did it have to be like this is for an intelligent family audience or was that something that came out of the script um, it was kind of like as we went along we were like right. this this is what it like it should be yeah sure yeah did you pitch um, it to uh, 
to warp or yeah warp. yeah I kind of yeah I went and get shit to warp mm. they're amazing yeah I mean yeah I don't think just their their like their rate of putting out mm. stuff is and their hit rate's pretty good as well yeah and they, they, they haven't done that much shit no <laughs> I mean I'm sure maybe, maybe they have and they the yeah, yeah, actually I think the only thing I didn't like that's come out under them is the Summons Town or something, the Shane Meadows yeah, one that was sort of... Some I didn't see that. It was like, I think it was going to be an advert for Eurostar or a short film, but then they made it, it was really long and they just released it as an album, uh, as, a, as a film. It's got the kid from This Is England in it. Oh, it's black and white. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I never, uh, I yeah that's the only thing I just thought that was a little bit weak, but, um, but everything else, I mean, This Is England, Dead Man's Shoes and all these yeah, th- yeah. things are incredible. Yeah. I, to, I know I've just mentioned all of Shane Meadows' films. <laughs> <laughs> all those other great stuff that's come out. Hmm. Yeah, well, I think that what they do really well is they manage to... Because it, 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 it's all like... Um, you know, like Peter Strickland. It's all like auteur sort of driven stuff, but they manage to make it commercial as well. Like mm. it's not, yeah, yeah. They're not like super obscure. Mm pieces of work that actually kind of hit that tone right. Is that, yeah. something that, is that something that you think about as well, like having a hook which can bring um, people in um, who are not interested in obscure, nerdy animation things? Yeah, what do you mean in... In, in your work, in your personal work? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, my, my own like, taste is quite... Like I, you know, I love like sugary stuff. Like, you right. know, uh, I don't know. I just try to do yeah things that I think I'll enjoy. You know, right, sure, mm, as well. Okay. Um, but that that is usually a mixture of like lines something a bit stupid and something a bit thoughtful too. So, right, <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, the one yeah the one thing I really like about your work is that I can see that it entertained you making it like even like the, some of the really short things like there was that one uh, the zombie one the cut out zombie guy oh yeah oh yeah. man that is so good it's like a bit of paper on a cut like a cutting board and you, you, you oh, imagine yeah. if you flicks the paper and he sort of yeah <laughs> comes out and that was a commission wasn't it yeah it was, it was just for like a, a friend of mine that made this app called zombie zombie gotcha and yeah, he just wanted a vibe. I was like, yeah, great, would do. So did you yeah, come up with the idea for it and stuff? Uh, I can't quite remember. It was a long time ago, yeah, but... But it, well, the, my I point is just, that it looks just, like, like... Just have fun with it and just like, okay. Right, okay. Yeah. I mean, and that's, and that's my point, is that it totally yeah. looked like something you did just to... Not just to entertain yourself, but like you knew this was like, this is pleasing me first yeah, and yeah, foremost, yeah. you know, and... Uh, yeah, I think your work does tend to have that kind of element of it. Even uh, what was the one for? Um, was it? Is it Dragon? The Dragon software. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I love that one. The one with the mop. Oof. Oh, cool. So it's beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that that, that was. Uh, I'm sure you guys have done this too, but like, it was like a really simple idea. It was like, yeah, it'd be fine. Just to be a, <laughs> a little insect, like changing shape in the middle mm-hmm. of a mm. like forest glen, mm. and like, yeah, I could do that. And it took like two months or something ridiculous. And I'm sure that like, sure is worth it. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> don't know. But how, yeah, I was looking at that, that <laughs> again today, man. I wanted to speak to you a bit about. I suppose that's like a nice sort of case study to then talk about, like your the craft of it. Because I was looking at it and it was so, um, you know, like it, with people would, when I used to seeing people do stop motion, it's kind of like you've got this model and you can kind of then, you can almost straight ahead, like he walks over here, he bends over, he picks up a cup or whatever. You, you can do it all within the model, but there's so much replacement in it. I yeah, wonder right. like how you sort of plan that out. Did, like, would you, did <laughs> that's, you have- the, that's the thing. No, we, I mean, I, ha- I had like kind of key shapes that I knew, you know, I wanted mm. to hit, but um, the yeah kind of like the way you know the the way I got there like if 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 it had been a a, a big budget commercial mm. doing something like that would it just wouldn't have flown really or would, I would have had to have done it a way that you know it was like heavily pre in advance and right. um and it just would have I think it probably would have like removed a bit of the 
the magic of actually just animating straight ahead. Oh, you did? You didn't plan any of that? No, no, it's just animating wow. straight ahead. Oh yeah, my yeah. god. So yeah. how did you know to sort of like cut up everything and how to get into well, these just different like shapes? just like look at what the next shape is. And, right. And you did know. you literally carve out things for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so all of those things are like different models. Right. Uh, different like... It's incredible because the spacing on it's amazing. It's not just like popping into a weird smaller shape. It sort of graduates into it really nicely and will get the forms, you know, into a bigger shape or a longer shape. Like, uh, cool. wow, man, I'm deadly impressed by that. Oh, right. like, I honestly <laughs> thought, wow, you must have like rough animated it first in Flash and then like kind of like or done some no, previs. No, wow, no, man, no, that no, there's no previs on it. Well, I really hate you now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. Do you, no, because I think that's one of the most intricate bits of animation I've seen you do. Like when I saw that, I was like, "Fuck, man, this is serious business." <laughs> like really, yeah, really cool. beautiful. Even the way the the wings sort of open out and stuff, like on the on the the butterfly or the, the dragonfly yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, thanks. Well, I went to the for uh, uh, another very talented time animator on that called Anna Ginsberg. Who, okay. Um, did a lot of like the wing, the wing work. So that's her credit. Wow. But um, but yeah, it's just straight, yeah, straight ahead stuff. And I, and I think it's it's kind of a shame, like you. It's impossible to explain why that works, mm. to people. But yeah, like you know, yeah. if I was trying to pitch that as a big commercial thing, like lovely yeah. like Jamie Clary, the guy from Dragon Frame, yeah, had you know was a fan of her work and was just like, you know, just trusted. That whatever it was, it would be fine. Mm. It's like, oh, great, thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna have a go at this. And, and but yeah, on, on a bigger scale, that mm. kind of thing. He used Dragon Frame really once, very briefly oh, yeah. on a project, and it struck me as an amazing piece of software. It is. The, the nice thing about Dragon Frame is that it's it's created by yeah Jamie Kalari, who's a, who's an amazing stop motion director, kind of in his own right. So like I think at the moment he's directing The Little Prince, which is a oh, yeah. Yeah, animated wow. story feature book. of that. Yeah, of, of the storybook. And um, and so everything as part of it is totally from like you know his user perspective. He's like, I want that, and I want that. And, and does he have that. a team of developers around him that are working? Yeah, well, he works with um, his brother, actually, Dimitri Dimitri. Yeah, okay. that's all right. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, he's uh, yeah. So he works with his brother, who's the developer. Wow. Frame. But they also build these like amazing motion control rigs, and like have proper used, hardware. Have yeah, used yeah, they're incredible. What's it called? It's got uh, it's like the, the Volo. Oh yeah, that's the, the Volo. One yeah, it's like this big like swan thing. And do you rent it, or have you got one? You got um, one? we we've we've. Yeah, we used one on Marilyn. It's too big for our studio, so we've we've got a smaller motion control rig, which which works amazingly with Dragon as well. So like in the in like five years ago, before that program, you'd have to use these like space age computers to program like motion, you know, motion pass. You could do multiple mm. passes, but with this stuff, it's like totally intuitive. It's just like After Effects. You just like <laughs> plot your little graph, and suddenly you've got this like. Awesome. Totally, I guess on the podcast people can't see my hand, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's wiggling all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> is a motion control rig expensive? Um, not not like unfeasibly. Like the the one we've got is made by a company called Ditto Gear, and it's about five grand for. Okay, but compared to like, is it Milo or like the main? Yeah, like compared to like two hundred grand or something, right, yeah. uh-huh. which is like what you usually pay. Right. And I think you could probably rent them as well, pretty cheap, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's nice yeah. to know. That's a nice little uh, early tip. <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Getting back to this, uh, we got off, we got a topic very briefly, but uh, the pictoplasma talk that you gave. Um, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> very briefly. An hour ago. That you were at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> you were vomiting into the sink. I while was, I was yes. Well, I was. Uh, so I did it for you. I, so well, I, I was knew you were there, well, and I was looking for you in the crowd, and I was like, <laughs> and this is that little reserve seat at the front. Yeah. Like, no, my friend Sam's coming. You can't like, sit there. And then I did, and then, and then we did have a moment at some point. 
because you and, you and I didn't know each other very well at this point. Um, and uh, I was having a wee in one of these amazing uh, Berlin toilets with lots of graffiti all over the walls. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. and you came you came along and uh, chose to do a urinal next to me, which I thought was very brotherly of you. That's that's just uh, how I and uh, and you noticed that I'd been eating asparagus. <laughs> yeah, I did. Which was, uh, which was. Yeah, I would never use. I would never use to feel so comfortable uh, yeah. as to mention that to another man. That you was you about. eating asparagus at the time? No, no, no. It was actually because you just had some in your teeth. <laughs> but I didn't want to say. So I was like, oh no, 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 it's because I can smell okay, you. I didn't even think about it, and then I was like, yeah, now you mention it. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, but there was. Uh, but yeah, during the uh, this this Berlin talk, you mentioned um, the fact that um, you you did this music video for TV on the radio. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was I th- it was, thought it was hilarious how they uh, they got in touch with you. Yeah, right. So so it was when um, I was uh, I was actually just finishing filming on Eagleman, and we got this. And on, so basically, on my website at the time, I had over my showreel a little piece of. TV on the radio music, which I had used illegally, which I feel terrible about now. But um, <laughs> what on your show reel? <laughs> yeah, that's not bad, is it? No, it's not at all. Right. But, anyway, but anyway, I got this email from them being like, uh, "Dear Mister, please, it has come to our attention that uh, you have illegally used our music on your website. Uh, we shall there be, we shall therefore be informing our solicitors and coming down on you with a ha 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 ha." Only joking. Oh, God. <laughs> actually, oh God. Uh, I'm like really my like, mouth was. I was about to start cussing them. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, no. They were just like, "Hi, are you joking?" No, we're really fine. Like, we, we love your stuff too. Do you want to do a music video for us? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, yeah, so that's how I ended up kind of doing something for them. Yeah, and and how was that experience? Was that? Uh, yeah, it was. It was quite intense. Like it was, it was like four four and a half minute track, and I think wow. I had like five and a half weeks to do it or something Jesus. so yeah it was pretty full on and I think it came as like so it was, it was part of an album long film called Nine Types of Light and um, so it all had to be like there was no getting around the release date like mm. there was a big you know big events like everyone else's music videos being done at the same time mm. and uh, and I got to like the like three days before and there's basically like a minute of blank space this is a good story, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> there was a minute of blank <laughs> space in, in the video. I'm in. And I was like, I mean, I, th- th- this is how it was planned. There. No, so, so, the, so I don't know if you've seen the video, but there are lots of, there's like stop motion sequences and then there are big, like, swelling ink moments as well. So were they in the of, blank spaces? So these were the blank spaces, and, and it was like stuff I planned, but I just couldn't fucking do it. Like, I was in the workshop with these like big trays of inks and oil paints and like, and I had this, these grand ideas about like sectioning off areas of inks, like sectioning off all the colours. You know, it's kind of like marbling, mm. and like the things were leaking and all the colours were leaking together. And it was just, and every time like a tiny little crack would happen, you'd have to reset the whole thing. It'd take like half an hour to reset. To- yeah, just total disaster. And I've been like hacking away at it for the whole production and. Anyway, yeah, so we just got to like three days before or whatever the video was meant to be in and just had nothing, like a big blank space of a minute. And um, then I just had one of those like moments where like, I don't know, you kind of like find the best of yourself, whatever, it's like you have to like, just the adrenaline. But anyway, we managed to pull out about a minute of video in oh, wow. a day. <laughs> oh, but in a day those sections well. are in it though, right? Yeah, yeah, they're all in it. So yeah, you so managed to do it in a day? It all worked out, but it was kind of like two weeks of failure. Like, managed to just get down to one day of like, wow. perfect success just because like physically needed to. Right. Like, there was no... It's a penalty shootout. Getting right. Yeah, it's like a penalty shootout. I'm just like... Got yeah, corner kind of... It. I don't know. Because those, been... uh, those sections are like amazing. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, how is that done? Like, I didn't understand. I couldn't work it out. Mm. But so you you sort of, you put like a shape in a tray and then filled it up around it and then put Yeah, in, so it's in kind, of, kind of like, imagine like cookie cutters, yeah. like cookie shapes. Mm. They're basically in a shallow tray and like half of the cookie shape is above the water. Right. And then it's like filling in 
oils around that and mm. then like moving around the cookie shapes. And there's a camera underneath. Yeah, there's a camera it. underneath, yeah. It's sounds so really, sounds really dumb, but... Uh, <laughs> no, look, look, the yeah. result is yeah. absolutely incredible. Like, uh, cool. yeah, I really love that. Yeah, it's amazing, wow. Yeah, but, but I was really proud of that product just because it was like a, a crazily dense time and just, yeah, I don't know. Like there's a, I don't know why deadlines are called like, dead, it's such a horrible word, like it should be like dawn horizon, <laughs> birth, uh, <laughs> birth portal, or something, it's like, it's like a beautiful thing to like have a really hard deadline because it just mm. brings out like, mm. Mm. yeah, I can fucking do it. Yeah. It's like, mm. good part of you, I think. Do you reckon it comes from people just like, actually, like, if you don't hand it in, I'm, you'll You're gonna die. die. <laughs> you get killed. Maybe. Yeah. 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 So, um, have, you, have you ever thought about doing anything live action then? Um, Is that something that interests you? I don't know, you yeah, occasionally. Not? I mean, I, I used to do, I, I went through a phase of doing a lot of like puppet stuff. But, um, you know what, there, there are just so many people who are really good at that right. who are just brilliant at live action mm. and I think I happen to be good at something else and mm. it would be fun to try but mm. it's not what I'm like naturally brilliant at and you <laughs> I'm actually brilliant <laughs> what, <laughs> you know, you know, like, I'm, I'm not going to be very good at doing live action sure and I'm not naturally brilliant at animation no, no, I think, no, 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 no. but like it's a thing I've concentrated on, and I sure. might as well. No, I, I mean I think that, I, think I, think I love most. So, it's it's yeah. a it's a niche area, like yeah. you know, you spend a huge amount of time working in that area. And, yeah, I think I'd just be disappointed that with it as well, like the lack of control, man. Right, that's a big thing. Control, for you, isn't it? they're gonna have stupid Strings. puppets yeah. messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about producers. Producer, um, that's a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I, I just, yeah, I, you know, animation's awesome. Why would you not want to do animation? Right, right, right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah man. man. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so what are you? Uh, so what are you working on now? You guys are uh, you and Dana Jerry are doing something? Yeah, we we um, I mean, the last couple of weeks, I've been pitching on stuff, but. Uh, we're going to be launching a little studio, I guess. So we're kind of putting our, putting both of us under this name, Parabella. So Parabella. Para, Parabella. Okay. Um. So we're going to be launching Parabella Studios right. next week. Wicked. Or something which will which will put Marilyn up and because that's something we both kind of made to. Oh, okay. Um, and that would be a company or it would just a... Uh, yeah, it would be, be a studio. I don't... Are you going to be represented still by Blink or...? Yeah, so Parabell is kind of represented already as uh, by Blink, which is just like me and Dan. Oh, okay. Um, is that up on the site like that? Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. We kind of... <laughs> I don't know if, yeah, it was just up there one day. Like, okay, great. Mm. But, um, but, but yeah, so we're going to put out our website and put out some new pieces of work. We've done a couple of other... It's really good, man. Yeah, we're excited about it. It's nice. Nice putting like everything, kind of just been like collecting stuff and looking at it as a whole. And like, oh yeah, it's like something. It's not, you know, because when you're in the moment, they feel like really disparate little nuggets, mm. or whatever. And so, what's yeah. the idea of um, forming a collective with uh, Dan Cherry? What's um, like? I mean, what what's the what, what's the main sort of purpose behind it, rather I mean, than working separately? We, we, we've worked together like for on pretty much everything like you know you worked on even when I've worked on those things and we shot Marilyn together and um, I don't know I mean probably the same reason you guys you know came together is that uh, okay I'll, I'll, I'll step back a, a moment but like so for a long time I thought like the, the way to make better work, you know, was to allow a little bit of serendipity into your work practice. And mm. I was like, yeah, cool, I understand that concept, it's a true thing, right? If you allow yourself to be a bit more open, you can do something a bit more than you're just yourself. Mm. And I was like, yeah, cool, I understand that. I'll use inks. Inks are chaotic. And of course, it's like, there's no process that you can do which is that true inflection of chaos like the inflection of chaos that lets you do something a bit more than yourself is 
other people and like just working like really collaboratively with other people just suddenly lets you be so much better than yourself on your own you know and uh, and I think that's that's it really I mean I've worked on my own like creatively anyway you know like just honing concepts and then working with a team of people to realise it but um, it's just it just works well you know it's it, like the, the few things we've done together have been really exciting and Dan's got a load of like brilliant complementary skills that I don't have and yeah it's just better it's just That's better great. working with people so. what's it like yeah. when you're in a stop motion studio like are you I mean it's like you, a Mardi Gras yeah it's like a big you're just doing the samba right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah place, just yeah. congering mm. around so you, you, know, you never been in a stop motion I studio I have no idea what it's like must come yeah, that's what I was yeah, But yeah. I mean, is is it like, I assume you've got all the windows kind of blacked out and you've got the lights <laughs> off and everyone's <laughs> yeah. kind of Quite uh, and and being careful so they don't knock things over on the table and things like that. Is there yeah, a certain yeah. atmosphere of like, of, of kind of, of calm and like carefulness? I guess there is, there is in shooting. But you know, like shooting is only a very, very small part of like it actually like you know most of the time is spent like in the set of actual like, actual animating can you know most people you know like a few hours or something of of the day because the rest of it is just like setting everything up and mm. and then and then it's quite a sort of bustling crew crew feel to things but but yeah probably the same as same as what you guys do. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> down, like, <laughs> yeah. wrestling over your own kind of corner of the puzzle. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. At times, yeah. I guess it's it's always a bit different. Yeah. So, do, do you intend to pull in your own jobs um, at your new studio, or is it going to be pretty no, much no. feeding off or getting them through the blink? Yeah, I, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll be represented by Blink still, mm. so that's. Yeah, we're kind of still part of that um, umbrella, but uh, I guess one thing we want to do is yeah, is like develop more of our like our own content right. stuff, and like put that under a put that under a name that's not Mike and Dan. Right. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. That, um, there's one thing. I mean, in a fairly like pragmatic way, it it feels a lot more approachable if it's yeah. not your personal name. Yeah, if it's not like I want to write an email to Sam Kohler. Yeah, no, the, you know, writing email to the line, then that's like that's like a public facing front, and the, yeah, it's it's, it's totally it's the better, same yeah. reason why we we did it. Like we were in a studio together, and whenever like we was got offered a, like a job or a music video or something, it was like yeah, I have a friend called Wes and a friend called Sam and a friend called Bjorn, and they've all yeah. done this, and here's all their blogs, and you have to go and check all them out. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. If we just call ourselves something and put it all on a website, and it's like then you can, you you almost kind of pull in your your assets together as Absolutely. well. Like yeah. uh, instead of going, oh my mate's got a fiver and my other mate's got a fiver, and you know, like, <laughs> one, if it's all pulled yeah. together, it, you know, you've got you've got like fifty quid, <laughs> big bucks. But you know what I mean? Like it's um, yeah. it's so much more easier for someone to understand because you know it, it, inevitably that person who's trying to like look for people to make a music video then has to turn around and go oh look here's this person I found and if they have to go oh I found this guy and he's got a friend called Wes and a friend called Bjorn and a friend called yeah, yeah. Sam it sort of it just isn't it just, people just lose energy yeah it's about give, I, I think I feel like quite a lot of the time it's about giving somebody a story I mean commercially um, it's about giving somebody a story that's completely pre-packaged that mm. they can then take to somebody else and tell as a story to mm. that person and that can be like a, a thing that will you know you make it easier for them to sell you in a way yeah that right way. yeah I suppose that, that makes sense maybe. yeah, can yeah. It yeah. is Michael please your real name it is right it is my real name because otherwise your whole family have all changed well, is, is that why you've been asking me so Ben please <laughs> right <laughs> Peter please <laughs> right. yeah 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 for real but but yes is a yes, in addition yeah. to the uh, yeah that your middle name drunk is, and is Mikey, <laughs> Mikey yes please yes it is so you got drunk and filled out a whole series of forms no no it's just one form really and it took like ten minutes and it right. cost fifteen pounds wow do it guys 
Everyone listening, do it. I don't think Yes Taylor has the same ring as. Well, uh, not you don't have to use Yes. <laughs> I think it's more difficult to add a last name. Right. Okay. But so the middle, middle the middle ones are pretty much it? up for grabs. Are yeah. They? Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Why well, open? I'm open with this idea. Yeah, I don't know. Just not. Yeah. Nothing would make McCall sound that funny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll workshop it. Yeah. We'll 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 figure okay. it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> That's a good point to finish. Yeah, yeah <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Thanks very much. Team Danger <laughs> McCourt. Yeah. All right. Well, well uh, yeah, thanks, Monkey Man. It's been oh, super sick. Yeah. Thank you, thanks, guys, for hanging out. Really Chatting to us. It's been yeah. fascinating. <laughs>